Hey kiddos, it's Jenny with the Go Box. Today, we're gonna be painting a tiger. Okay, let's zoom in to our image here and we'll talk about the things that we need to paint the tiger. I'm going to guide you right through it. So here's the original painting, which I'll show you. I've got my little picture, step-by-step -step pictures here, which is important for me to have. So I know exactly what steps that I did to get this on the canvas the way it is. I'm going to set this aside. Well, we will I'll reference it a lot throughout the painting process, but in your kit, you had your color palette that came. You've got these colors, plus the one I'm missing is black. I don't know where it is. So you'll need black and white. We use quite a bit of those. You can see it throughout the painting, all this white and black because of the patterns on the tiger. Tig on the tiger. <laughs> tiger is a city nearby. That's funny that I called it that. So you also have red and yellow. And we're gonna use those two to make orange and we mix a little white with it to make a really pretty orange. And then blue, which we'll use for the background. And then we also mix blue and yellow to make the green for the eyes. So you will also want a paper towel or an old rag that you can use for clean, uh, drying your brushes after you clean them. I have three brushes I'm working with. Uh, some of you bought them through the kit with us. Basically, you want a large brush, a medium brush, and a small brush. So the small one is what we will use to do details like the eyes and these little whiskers and some of the other stuff. Medium brush does a lot of work, so we use this for a lot of the stripes. But on this particular painting, we're gonna use our big brush a lot. So let's set those aside. The other thing you will need to have is a cup of water. So that's what you'll use to wash your brushes off with in your canvas. So let's go ahead and get started on our tiger. Okay, let's go ahead and we're gonna start off by drawing the tiger. So let's let's use our medium sized brush for that. I do like to dip it in the water, kind of lightly swoosh it across the, the bottom of the cup just to wake up and soften the bristles and then dry it off really good on the towel. So you wanna make sure that it's nice and just sort of damp dry. A lot of times I notice that when teaching the kids classes that you, uh, sometimes you guys will not dry it off quite good enough so you end up with drippy water on your canvas. Sometimes that's a cool effect, but for this particular painting, we wanna make sure it's just, it's kind of uh, damp, like the way that when you take a bath or a shower and you dry your hair with a towel, it should feel like that. We're gonna mix the color first. Orange. So orange is made by mixing red and yellow. And I put them next to each other on the palette so I can just scoot them together. And it's usually a little bit more yellow than red. I can tell I'm probably gonna have to get some more yellow on here in a little bit, at least when I make the eye color, because otherwise the eyes will end up, <laughs> the eyes will end up looking red, which we don't want. So I'm going to use all my yellow. And then what I'm going to do, this is a little darker than what you can see by looking at the, the tiger. This is a little darker than the orange I have on it. And the way I lightened it up is I mix in a little bit of white. So not a ton, because if you mix too much, it's going to turn really peach. And we don't really want a peach tiger. Unless maybe you do. That's okay. You can have a blue tiger if you want. I have done a lot of animal paintings where I use different colors, like turquoise. And they look really cool. So this is pretty close to the color on the tiger that I originally made. It'll work. I'm going to start off with this one. And what I'm going to teach you now is how to draw it out. So let's just get this scooted over. I can reference it a lot on screen. So I start by, we're going to draw a big, of a big circular shape because looking at different pictures of tigers, I notice their their heads are really round like this. They have a really big round head. And then their ears are just kind of short, but also more rounded, not quite like a bear. They're kind of a cross between almost a triangle like a cat and almost a bear ear. 
So I'll guide you through all of that. What I want to have us do first is we're going to mark off the top of the head. And what I do is I find the middle of the canvas. So between here and here, I just sort of eyeball the middle. So right about here for me. And then I'm going to drop down. This is probably about three to three and a half inches. And the biggest brush, if you got this from us, this is a one inch brush. So that kind of makes a nice little reference point. I can see already it's about three inches. You can just eyeball it. So right about there, it doesn't have to be exact. You can get it a little, a little, it can be a little lower or a little higher, it doesn't matter. And then I'm just gonna kind of sketch this big round shape that goes off the bottom of the canvas. So it's like I'm drawing a big ghost shape. Kind of reminds me of a ghost if I were to draw eyes. We're getting pretty close to fall here, so I'm starting to think about Halloween things. But there we go. I can tell already I made the, the head a little too pointy. It needs to be a little more straight across, so I'm going to fix that right now, just by going out on either side. So it's like a flat-headed ghost. That works. That works. Now let's talk about the ears. So again, they're sort of triangular, but also sort of round, and they they're placed about this is also probably about three inches apart. So maybe I'll make a little mark here and go over here and make about three inches away and make another mark. Hey, that looks funny. It looks like I'm making some kind of alien. <laughs> and I'm going to go up at an angle, kind of like I'm pointing up towards the top corner and on this one too, like I'm pointing up, drawing up towards the top corner. And then I round the top and come back down. So sort of cat, cat-like. The tiger is a cat, but I noticed their ears are slightly rounder. And I can round this face out just a bit more. There. <laughs> now it looks less like an alien, more like a kitty cat. Now I'm going to I'm going to actually divide this in half with a line that goes here and here. So what we're looking at here, see how I slightly curved this line? This is the inside part of the ear that has all the the long hair is growing out of it and it's got the dark part, which we add later. And this is the outside part of the ear. So when you're looking at this tiger face on, and sometimes I think they're probably like dogs where they tilt their ears like that. Let's go ahead and color this in. And this in. I like this painting because there are some elements of it that are slightly sloppy. And sloppy works really good for me. I'll fix up the top of the head just a little. And now I'm going to paint about one brush width-ish on either side. So I just have this little white triangle left, which I'll paint black later. See that? I just have a little white triangle space left. All right, we got that out of the way. We've got a lots of orange. And now we're gonna start drawing the face. So what I did for this guy is they have, they have all this bulk around their face, but their actual face is this part here, which is shaped a lot like a, kind of like a light bulb or uh, maybe like a upside down pear shape. They have the cheek cheekbones that come down and then it rounds down to a big wide chin here. I'll guide you through that. So let's go ahead down here below the ears. Let's say, let's say I travel down maybe a couple inch, inch and a half on either side. I'm going to come inside just a bit. I'm going to make a big curve. I'm going to do that over here to about the same. Just eyeball it. Everything can be painted over. So like if I mess this up, it's not a big deal because we're going to add lots and lots of paint to this. So I can fix anything. And then I'm going to come down and make a kind of, it's not really a round chin. It's kind of like a rounded square. We're doing round, rounded shapes with this painting. So in fact, actually this rather than like an upside down pear is what I compared it to, but it kind of looks like we're starting to draw like a skeleton shape. See, I'm picking all Halloween paintings right now. That's what we'll be putting out next. We'll be putting out a lot of a uh, kind of fall, probably some slightly Halloweenish paintings, cats and things like that. So there we go. Looks really funny right now, doesn't it? <laughs> and it looks like, what are we painting? We don't know. Let's make the nose. So 
what we're doing now, even though the nose is pink later, we're gonna start with this orange color and it comes in right real close to where this curves in. So I'm gonna go across here, just make a, a little mark, just right in the center, right where this curves in, if you were to draw a line straight across. And then I'm gonna turn that into a wide V shape, which we'll add to later. All right. So we have this first step done, yay. And what I wanna do next is we're going to color in from the nose up and out. It almost looks like we're starting to draw a fox at first, like the way it's patterned. So I'm looking at my picture, if I could show, I don't know if I can show you that, it's got a weird shadow on it. But I'm gonna come up like this on either side. They have a big broad nose area. So this, their nose is down here, but this is their like nose bridge. It's really broad and see how it kind of goes out at an angle. And then this is going to arch up kind of like the way a fox faces. Now see how I meet this? So it's like I made a weird heart. A weird heart with a square bottom. <laughs> now let's color all this in. This part's fun. Later on, we'll add the pink to the nose. So for at first, it's gonna be orange. And I'm going to come around here. And I'll just probably stop right below the ear here with that color. So I'm gonna mark this off too. And then we color all that in. We leave these triangles white. If you need to use a bigger brush, you can just content with this one for now. It looks like I'm probably gonna have to make more orange in a little while. If you have to make more orange and it's not the exact same shade, that's not a big deal. I have several shades of orange going on here. You can see some areas it's like a, kind of a burnt orange, almost brownish. Others it's really yellow and up in here is kind of yellow. So it's okay, they have lots of different tones of for colors. It looks more natural too if you have different color tones going on. These colors made a pretty good orange. Sometimes certain reds don't make great oranges depending on the paint manufacturer, but I'm really happy with our own little brand of paint that we started here. It seems to work really good. So now it looks like some kind of weird fox. I'm gonna mix some more white in with some of my orange that I had not mixed white in with yet. So then I'll have more to work with. Yay. All right. What next? Okay, so we're going to do some of these stripes, which a lot of a lot of them kind of get painted over and we have to redo them anyway. It's not a big deal. So I'm going to just come through here. And I'm just see how I'm just dabbing my brush up and down. And following the curve of the face. Tire patterns are really interesting. I'm gonna do another here. I was a little nervous. I knew I really wanted to paint a tiger, but I knew the patterns can be kind of complicated. So I was glad with the way it turned out. It looks like a tiger. Yay. Let's go ahead and draw the mouth on now. And I feel like if we use the very tip of this brush, we can get a small line, which we paint over later anyway. So I wanna draw a little short line under the nose. This is probably about an inch long, you can see there. And then it curves across over here and it meets up right where this curves in. See that? It's almost like it makes a big circle Ooh, right around there. He looks like he's smiling. That's good, maybe he's happy. Hopefully he's happy. If I were to meet a, a jungle, if I were to meet a tiger in the wild, I would, in the jungle, I would want it to be happy. Happy and not hungry. That would be good. <laughs> okay, so this part, what we do next is um, we're going to, let me, while I put the orange on the brush, let's turn this into more of a furry shape. So it's not just a single line on either side. Anytime you can do something and make it look more furry when you're painting a furry animal, that's always good. 
We don't really have to do it down here because we, we had white for later on. But let's go ahead and wash our brush off. We're gonna switch down to the smallest brush for just a little bit. So go ahead and clean it off really good. We'll mix it around in a little circle. So one thing when you're washing your brush, don't jab it up and down. We wanna keep those bristles nice and sharp and intact. So when I'm cleaning my brush, with my towel, rather than smashing it up and down, I'm kind of doing this on the bottom of the cup. See? So it's like bending it. Let me see if I can show that better. Bending it like that, rather than jamming it. So when you jam it up and down, it'll make these bristles fray apart and then it will be harder to work with. So there's your little brush care 101 session. Let's pick up our little tiny brush now. I'm gonna go ahead and just lightly brush it on the bottom of the cup to kind of loosen up the bristles, dry it off really good. And we're gonna use black now, just a little black on the tip of the bristle. So you don't need to, you don't need to um, drag your whole entire brush through the, through the black. I just put a little bit on the very tip. And I'm gonna come down, draw, tracing over this line and make the smile again. It's okay to see some orange through it. You can, in fact, you can see that on the original. I, th I actually kind of like the way that look, looked in the end. We, we'll come back and add some white fur that helps cover that up, most of that up anyway. Yay, smiley. He's got a smile a little wider on one side. That's all right. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make these nostrils. They're just on either side here, just a little black dash. Doesn't have to be perfect. And now, as crazy as it sounds, I don't normally put paintings together this way. We usually draw eyes and stuff last, but we're gonna do them now. And I'm gonna show you how. They're actually pretty easy. Um, tiger eyes are very exotic. So let me see. Rather, I'll just draw on my palette for a second. So rather than making an eye like this, where, you know, if I draw a straight line through it, there's no tilt. Let me continue the straight line. It's gonna be more like this. It's gonna go up like that. And then this is gonna come up under that middle line. So see how, see the difference? This one's more pointed up on the corner and this one's more straight across. And then with the tiger eyes, we come in and we bring a part down here and a part up here. So see how it makes it look really exotic. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay. So since we don't want to draw a straight line across our canvas, we're going to freehand it. So we're going to put an eye here and an eye here. So I let me show you one more time here. Normally, I would have you draw a rainbow shape to make the top of the eye. And then we draw a rainbow shape, upside down rainbow shape underneath. Oh, that's a really round eye. But this time, we're going to do a rainbow shape, but the second side is not going to come down all the way. So if I were to draw a straight line across here like that, See how that doesn't come all the way down there. It's going to end right there. And then the underneath side is also going to be a rainbow shape upside down. It's going to meet that one way up here. If that makes sense, let's do it. We're just going to go for it. Okay. So right here, rainbow shape, but I'm going to end it way up here. So he looks like he's just laughing really hard at somebody's funny joke. Okay, so getting the second eye exactly the same is almost impossible without using like a template or a projector or something. You can see how different these two eyes are. This one's a little pointier on the end. It kind of tilts up a little more. That's okay. It still looks like a tiger. So I'm going to sort of go across here, try to line these up right. Rainbow shape and end it up here. That one went down a little far. Oh, that's actually really cute. If you want to leave your eyes like that and have, have shut eyes on your tiger, you can. But I'll show you how to do the rest. Okay, so then under here we do an upside down rainbow shape, almost like this is reflected in water. And then this is going to join up here. So then we end up with an eye that points upward. Same thing over here. Don't worry if they're not exactly the same. Mine never are. And I've been painting for 25 years. Okay. Let's just, for right now, we're gonna make these a little more exotic. So you see how on this one, how the black comes down on the inner corner 
Let's do that. So it comes down almost along the side of the nose. Do that here. And this is all part of their tiger pattern. And then rather than leaving it like a single line like that, I turn it into slightly like where it meets up with this bottom eyelid a little better, almost like it's triangular shape, like an upside down triangle, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. Looks like he's wearing weird little glasses. And now on the top, I'm gonna come across the top and out. They almost look like they're wearing like really special eyeliner. They have natural pretty eyeliner. Lucky. <laughs> and I'll match that up over here. There. They're not exactly the same. But we're going to go with it. You know, in reality, our human faces are not a mirror image of each other. Sometimes you have one eyelid that's maybe a fraction bigger or smaller than the other. I'm washing my brush, by the way. You can do that too. And sometimes you have an earlobe that's maybe a little longer than the other. That's what I have. I have one earlobe that, like, when I got it, my ears pierced when I was young. One was really easy to pierce and one was super small. Funny. Oh, you know what? I had us wash our brush, but we need to do one more statement with it. So we're going to use it again in black paint. We need to draw the pupil. So that is the little black part in the center of the eye. And it's connected to this top lid. So up here, I just draw a little circle. You want it to come down in the eye far enough so it doesn't look like your, if you do it too high up, it can look like your tiger, ti ti why don't you call me a tiger? It can look like your tiger is rolling its eyes. If you want it to look like that, you can make it that way. You can give it any expression you want. <laughs> but see, this one, I ended up, it's a little bit higher up than that one. So you can see how if I cover up that, it kind of looks like he's rolling his eyes or looking skyward a little bit. This one's a little more straight on, a little bit. So I'll just bring this down a little further. Let's color those in. If you've gone down too far with this and you need more of the color part of the eye showing, that's easy to do later on when we add the green. You can just reduce the size of this black pupil by painting green over some of it. Everything's fixable. When you're working with this type of paint, you can fix anything. You're never locked into what you've done. Okay, let's wash that brush. Now we're done with it for now. And let's go to the next part. Oh, we get to add some black stripes. Yay, I always think that's kind of fun. We're gonna go back to this brush and solid black. Let's go ahead and dip the brush in the black. And let's start by filling in this. And I'm gonna go up a little higher in the ear. There. So see how I, I came up quite a bit higher, but not all the way to the top. I'll do that on this side too. So it's like a, makes a tall skinny triangle shape. And now I'm gonna come along the sides of the face right along the edge of this orange that we painted on there. And I'm going to come under the chin. This, a lot of times it might just connect with the bottom of the canvas, like, like what's happening with me. That's okay. All about this big tiger face. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead now and we're gonna add a black stripe right here. We wanna leave white space. So this is gonna come partly over the orange here. We paint white back on and it slightly overlaps some of these black stripes later on. It looks really neat. So this one's gonna come a little higher than this one did. And we'll do it over here too. This one I didn't end up with a lot of white space because of how close together my orange stripes were, but that's okay. It's all part of the pattern. Yeah, this one's a little different. <laughs> and now I've got some room to do 
other stripe. So I've done this one and this one. You might be able to fit two more on. So I'll put one right here. Tap, 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 tap. This canvas must not be perfectly straight. So it's going to rock a little bit. <laughs> and I'll put one right here. And I've got room for one more here. And I've got room for just a tiny bit of one here. Already he's looking slightly tigerish. We've got our black filled in here and here. And now we're going to start getting some patterns on the face. Um, looking at different pictures of tigers. Hey, I said it right. <laughs> Sometimes these are connected. So I'll like do a black line here and here. Just some of the way their patterns are designed. Maybe they have unique patterns from each other. That's something I'd have to Google. And the top of their head has, it's almost like, it looks almost like a spider, doesn't it? Like there's the body and there's the legs. It's a six legged spider. So what I did is I divided the, the head in half just by doing a, like a dotted line. Boom, right down the middle. That's this right here. And then up here, I do a little, you can do a furry, but furry brush strokes by tapping it up and down. So they're almost like forehead wrinkles. And then I come down, I'll do another one. Maybe it's a little wider than the one above it. it reminds me of like the way cavemen would paint like spiders or something. It's kind of caveman art-ish. <laughs> The caveman spider. And then down here, I'll just do a couple lines like that. It really does look like we're doing cave paintings, doesn't it? These are like the the pinchers of the spider. <laughs> and maybe the eight, the set of the remaining two, two legs are way back here in the back of the head. Wow, little did we know that tigers had spider on their heads. Okay, so what I want to do now is the eyebrow thing. It looks like a V, it looks like a check mark. So it's short on one side and it's up higher on the other. And then it meets up with some black here. Let's do this black part first. So I'm gonna continue this up under the ear and it's gonna stop right about here. I'll do that on this one too. And now I'm gonna do the check mark eyebrows. So that's gonna come right here down towards the eye. And then the other side that's taller is going to meet up with this. So some of you guys might have tabby cats. And I always think of tabby cats as being, I'm doing the other one now, as being like mini tigers because their patterns, even though the tabby cats are kind of grayish brown, their patterns are very similar. If you look at like all up around the face and everything. So maybe they're just little mini tigers. Tigers? Why do I keep saying tiger, Paul? so bizarre. <laughs> yeah, we used to have a studio in a city called Tiger. This is driving me nuts. Okay, so let's go ahead and make the lines that also meet up with this. And they extend from the pointy edge of this eye up here, here and here, on our tiger. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, looking good. I can tell already my new one's gonna have a little bit rounder face. So maybe it'll just look like a little bit younger tiger. <laughs> Could be. What I wanna have us do now is wash our brush. While I've got the orange on my palette. So clean that really good. You wanna get all the black out of it. Even if you have to pause the video and change your water cup, I'm gonna get all of that out. Dry it off. And I'm going to take that same brush, the medium sized one, dip it in my orange, and I want to bring some of this under eye orange. So there is a little white space between the eye and this part. So think of this as like blush, like it's my little orange blush. <laughs> so we do leave a little white gap, but don't worry if you accidentally don't leave white because we can come back with white paint later and touch it up. Be really careful right here because we have 
that black line that we just did, which is going to be really wet. So I'm not even going to touch those two together. I'm just going to come really close, but not touching. And I'm going to come along here a little wider. So if I were to compare this to something shape-wise, let me the orange here. It almost looks like a wing shape, like an angel wing. And I'm going to do that over here. So come really close to the under eye, but don't touch this. It's still wet. Their angel wing shape. I'm going to connect that there. Or it could be like eagle wings. But they do have this orange on their face. And it can come down farther. We're going to put some darker reddish brown here and here, which I really like. I feel like that makes that nose look a lot more three-dimensional by having it on the edges, almost like shading. That's a little advanced technique you guys get to learn. Super cool. Um, we will paint some more orange. So see how this is really rounded and this is more blended. We're going to fix that up after this black dries. So right now it looks really like a funky mask that we've drawn, but we'll change that up. We're going to switch gears now and paint the background around our tiger tiger <laughs> because this is all dry. For the most part, it should be mostly dry. If it's not dry, if you still have really wet orange paint around the edges, you'll want to have a parent or guardian help you hair dry your canvas because you'll get orange mixed, smeared into your blue sky, which you'll be fighting with a bit. It'd be a little difficult to get out. So we're gonna now switch to our biggest brush. I cleaned off that medium sized brush. This one, I do wanna start by just brushing across the bottom of the water cup, getting it a little bit damp and loosened up. And then make sure you dry it really well on your towel. No drippy water on there. And we're going to mix a really light blue color. So a lot of white, just pull some aside here. And then I'll use the corner of the brush, just the corner and pick up a little blue and mix it in. So you can decide how vivid blue you want your sky. Maybe you want a really pale blue or maybe you want it on the darker side. You just play around with the paint you mix until you get a color you like. This is pretty close to what I like. And I'm gonna start in this upper corner. And I'm just sort of dabbing my brush on here because by dabbing it around like this, you'll get some uh, more uh, texture or the, the suggestion of texture. It's not really texture, like texture would be more three-dimensional, kind of like frosting, you can pipe frosting and see the texture of the frosting. This is that we create the illusion of texture by how we move our brush around. So I'm just moving it around kind of sloppily, but being careful around the tiger. <laughs> so see how I'm coming really close to the tiger, but not really touching it quite yet. We will get close. We'll get right up there to the orange in a minute. First, I'm going to paint close to it. One thing I'll show you real quick that's kind of cool. I know a lot of you guys like to paint clouds and sometimes you just paint like big puffy things for clouds, but I'll show you a really easy way to paint really wispy clouds that are kind of blended into the sky. Kind of like what I've got going on up here, really thin clouds. You can dip your brush in just plain white, even though it has blue all over it and just paint some white on here and blend it in. Look at that. You've got like really natural looking clouds. And since our tiger is more of a realistic tiger, we probably want fairly natural looking cloud formations so that it matches. Okay, now I can get close to the tiger with the skinny edge of my brush. The orange is dry. You can slightly overlap a little bit because we do retrace the tiger later. So that's not a big deal. Like if you accidentally make your ears cut off at the top, like I just did, <laughs> I can fix that up later. That's not any issue at all. And the top of the head. So now you see why you want that orange paint really nice and dry or you're going to have orange colored sky, which if you were doing a sunset would be cool. So 
So like I said, we retrace the tiger shape, tiger head later on with some little bit darker orange and we make it furry like that. And so these spots where I cut off the ear a little bit, that's, I'm not even gonna worry about that. There we go. Okay, now if you want your tiger to have blue eyes, I, I considered that when I made this one and I finally decided on green. In nature, they have green eyes. They're not gonna have blue eyes. That would probably be extremely rare. But in painting, you can make them whatever color you want. That's the cool thing about painting. So keep that in mind. You can have your blue color later on and when we fill in the eyes. We wanna wait a bit. That black is maybe not 100% dry yet. Just cleaning my brush. <laughs> I think we're done with this big brush. For the rest of the painting. Okay, so we've got our, our basic tiger drawn on here. You can definitely see there's a difference between the two. This one has a lot of extra stuff built in and, and painted on. We're gonna get there, but for now we have to start with this basic tiger. And what I want to do is I want to make this dark reddish color that we'll use to shade the nose. And then I think we could put some up in here, but I see there's a little bits of it. It's not really a priority through there, but definitely through the, the nose area. I like it. And what did I mix? Let's see. I think I did. I made the orange color without white mixed in it. So that was red and yellow. More yellow than red. So it's probably like one dot of red and two dots of yellow. If I were to give you a recipe, need to get some more yellow on here. There it is. Nope, oh, I dipped my fingertip in, or my thumb tip in black. I almost always get more paint on my hands than my canvas. Painting can be a messy process. Okay, so let's make orange. Two dots yellow, one dot red. Somewhere in that recipe. So you're gonna get this darker color. You can see if I paint it on there, it's a bit darker. I turn it just a little more brown. And the way I do that is very carefully add a tiny bit of black. So I just dip the very tip of the bristles in some black and stir it in there. You can see how it's turned it more of a brownish. So you don't want a lot. If it turns too dark, you're gonna to have to start over. That's okay. I've had to start over a million times when I've been painting. This is probably about right. Let me paint some on there. I almost feel like I could have a tiny bit more black mixed in. So I just add a dot at a time. That's an easier way of doing it. And then I'm gonna come along the nose on either side. Yeah, that's the right color. That worked out good. And up in here, they can kind of join together in a point. See how it comes to a point right under those. Right under our spider antennas. And then if you want, you can add some stripes in between your black stripes of this color. I do like adding different shades of orange throughout here. I think that's probably how they really are. But just make sure your brush strokes are rather than straight lines, they're more of a furry dabbed on texture. That will look a little more natural. Later on, I think this blue sky maybe needs to dry a little bit more, but this is the color we use to trace along the top which helps set that apart from the blue sky. You can see the difference. This is way better looking than that. Um, let's go ahead and I don't think there's anywhere else where we use this burnt orange color other than when we outline. So let's, let's wash that off. Now what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna blend this in a little better. So see how this is a really harsh line right along here and over here it's more blended. The way that I do that is I paint this orange here Kind of over the top like a glaze. I am going to wash this brush, medium sized brush, and I've got my orange on the canvas. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow to some of it. Because one of the things I like about this tiger is there is some bright yellow or yellowy orange 
through there. So go ahead and do that in a little spot. I saved a lot of this regular orange. Now, if your brush is getting black in this, you'll want to change your water. So you'll want to pause the video and have someone help you change your water and get clean water in your cup and rewash your brush to get all black out of it. I can see on mine a little bit of black is seeping out. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to glaze over this. And you can see how that helps soften the edge of that. And if I need to add more of that regular orange back in there to help soften it up even more, I can. This is the yellowy orange. And then I'll paint some of that yellowy orange through here. Now I can come up and meet the black right through here. That's not a big deal because it's dry. This looks so much better later on when we come in with white. Let's add this yellowy orange in some other places. Just some stripes like we have been doing. You can glaze over the top edge of that. So what I'm doing is just creating other fur colors mixed in with the regular orange. So it's not just all one color. We'll paint a little of that up in here. Think of it more like you're just adding some highlights. You get to decide where they go. We are the hairstylist and we're styling this tiger's hair or fur. <laughs> okay, that looks, that looks okay, that worked. Um, there's obviously a lot of white needs to be added to soften up like through here where I've got the really harsh orange outlines. Uh, I almost feel like we can maybe add some more black stripes here and there, but let's add some white between the stripes first. This is what we do right now. It's kind of a game changer. It's adding this along here. I love it. It makes it look so fluffy and like you just want to pet it, lay next to it. Only that's probably not a good idea because it might be hungry. Let's wash our brush. Get it really clean because we're going to be using white. It's okay if you end up with a little bit of orange mixed in there. In fact, when I first did the tiger, if I could show you, you can see this part we're going to do next. I had my black kind of mixed in and it made sort of a, here was a shadow from my phone. Here it made, oh, there's a text. Here uh, it was kind of almost beigey color. And it's just because it, the black wasn't completely dry. And uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and let me go back to my picture. Here it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the white paint. And I'm gonna start between these two. I'm just gonna paint some white long fluff. Look at that, already it looks way better. So I'm slightly overlapping my black stripes. And you can come up here and along the edge of the tiger. Yeah, looking good. And I'll do some here where I have white. So my question is, do tigers have black stripes? Or do they have orange stripes? Or do they have white stripes? <laughs> I would say it's probably a good combination of all three of those. All right, let's go ahead and fluff along the cheekbones here. I'm covering up that outline just a bit, that orange, see this orange outline that's there? And I'm fluffing into the black paint there. Definitely a lot rounder face on this one. This one's been eating, eating all the good jungle food. <laughs> I think we can shape that up a little better later. I'm going to come down and make a fluffy beard sort of thing that overlaps this bottom chin black. I 
And I feel like on mine, I can add another black stripe once this is dry to kind of like I have here. It just is, will be a way to thin out the face, unless you want a really round face. I don't really think there's a problem with having a round face. One of the things that I like is I like the mouth to connect with the edge here because that is how they look. And this one, the mouth, it doesn't connect to anything because I had the face too chunky. So I will do, I'll fix that up later. I'll show you how to do it too if you have the same problem. Let's go ahead and paint the white in here. And under the nose. You can cover up some of the orange that's around when we first drew in the mouth. That's pretty easy. See that, how we mostly covered it up. Even though the canvas is white, I like adding painting white paint on there because sometimes I feel like it will add a little bit of texture in the plain white part of the canvas. It just needs something. It needs the paint on there. You look better. Much better. Okay, got a little orange here. One of the things I like about this one is it does have a little bit of tiny little bit of orange mixed in the white paint. And I know what happened. This was wet when I did it. So I'm going to take my brush and it has white on it. I'm going to not wash it. I'm going to dip it in that lighter orange color we made. And I'm going to blend the two together. And I can blend down until it just sort of runs out of paint. This is how you blend things on with acrylic paint. See, it looks much better. Rather than this harsh solid line there, this is more faded in like this one is. So I just took my brush without washing it, had white on it, and I'm going to blend orange and white together from this under eye shading down in, onto the cheekbone along either side of the nose too. Very peachy. So I'm blending wet paint into wet paint which is, it's a little bit of an advanced technique, but you guys can handle that. I know you can because I've taught a bunch of you kiddos over the years and I've seen you do it. Okay, I like that. That looks pretty good. Pretty good. I'm trying to think here, just looking at my painting. I worked up the face just a bit. Let's, uh, let's continue on with our white fur. I kind of went off target there. We do want to wash our brush because it's got the little pale peach on it. And I'm going to go back to white paint now and we'll continue on with adding the fur through these stripes. So the areas of your canvas that are white, you're going to take and fluff some uh, white fur in there, slightly overlapping your black and orange stripes. It's okay if you accidentally cover some of the orange stripes because I did come back and I added some orange in there afterwards, which I'll have us do. This does work really good for softening everything up. You can see how much softer this side looks than this side. But now I'm going to move over to this side. This is fun. I love doing this stuff. I love painting animals. You guys have seen that most of my paintings, I think all of the kids crate paintings I've done, our animals. And that's only because after running the studio for almost 10 years, I know you kiddos love painting animals and I do too. So let's just share that joy together <laughs> and we'll paint all kinds of animals. If you guys want to give me any suggestions, you can uh, comment on the bottom of the video or have a parent comment or email. And I will Take your suggestions for other animals we could paint together. I just had to add more white to my palette. I'm running out. So we can bring this white up higher. We'll do that on both sides in just a bit. But see how I'm bringing it up here? Starting to get up a little higher on the face. Like I said, I'll show you all how to do that. One of the things I like about adding the white on top later, like drawing, drawing the black stripes on first and adding this later, 
is it's a way to kind of thin them out and make them just look like they fit in a little better. So I think the normal tendency would be to want to paint the black stripes in later and probably in some first paintings I did. I bet I did it that way. But this is just a technique I've learned along the way just by experimenting. All right, I think I've got a good, good bit of white going on here. If there are any spots that you need a second coat on, you want to start over on this side. Like if you're seeing some color seeping through that you don't really want. Uh, you, you'll start with this side since it's going to be more dry and then work your way over here. But let's let's plan on doing that later on. We'll add a bit more orange down in here to make it match up kind of with this one a little bit. I've got white on my brush and I can still see some of my orangey outlines. I'm just going to reduce that a little bit by adding a second coat of white around here. If you see a little orange through that's not a big deal at all. But I was seeing quite a lot and I'm going to have to repaint on the mouth. I think I had to do that originally anyway. I bet we could use the little brush later on and make the chin look even more fluffy. Okay, so I'm going to get have us get some more white paint around the eyes fix this up because this is too hard of a line here. And then we'll, we'll bring it up in here and make the, the ear hair that grows real fluffy. I love this because it sort of makes this black inner ear look more like an inner ear because it goes over the edge of it just a bit. And then we do some white highlighting through here. Let's start with an easy area. So let's let's just go along here. So starting right, right real close to where the, the top of this ear meets the forehead going to go across and here's where I use the very tip of the bristles and I'm going to flick little brush flicks of hair upward and outward over the ear. I have a hard time working on the left side because I'm right handed. So I always feel like it's like feels strange <laughs> for me. And I'll come down and meet this white here. Okay, that worked. Let's do the other side. This will be a little easier for me being right-handed. I see I've got a glob of wet black paint here. If you have something like that, just kind of carefully work around it. I can add more fluff to the ear later if needed after that dries. And I'm gonna go along the edge here. I'm gonna cover up this orange because I want the white to be in the background, like flick. I want the white to be the outline of the tiger, I guess, because that makes it look a little more fluffy. Yay, fluffy is good. Okay, let's go ahead and add these white highlights up here. And it's just like what we've been doing, where you take and you add a few dabby brush strokes of white in between the stripes with all those other colors. You don't even have to have much paint on your brush. Just the tiniest little bit of white. You don't need globs of paint. In fact, it's probably better if you have less. Because it, since it's just a, an accent color or a highlight, then you don't have to figure out where it's all going to go if you put too much. I'll show you later too, using the smallest brush, how to make a little bit more detailed fur in some areas. Now, I want to work on this eye area. This looks, the way it looks right now is kind of cool if I was painting a picture of a tiger mask, but since we're trying to make a more realistic tiger, I definitely want to blend those hard lines out and it's going to be best done with white paint. And I will start along here, just on the inside of the nose, working my way up and I'm flicking the white over the edge of the orange make it furry, kind of like how we did the fur around the ears. And you want to make sure these are all dry. So if you need to hair dry it, pause the video and go hair dry it. It'll take just like 30 seconds. Now let's let's fit, uh, fix up the edge of this here. 
And I'm going to bring some white up here along the inner edge of this check mark shape. And then you can put some white inside that check marky shape too. All it's going to do is just suggest more patterns. And we know tigers have tons of patterns, so we can suggest lots and lots of patterns as we go. Just add some white in here. And this side looks pretty good, except under the eye. So I'm going to come in and put some white fluff. Think of it like fur, so it's going to be like raggedy and fluffy under the eye. If you get too much, wash. Uh, don't wash your brush, just dip it in the orange paint and kind of blend it like we did this earlier. Blending the wet paint with the wet paint. You guys are getting a little advanced technique here. But you can do it, I know you can. Okay, so now this side. I might have to wipe my brush off or clean it off because I had some peach on it. I just wiped it on the towel because I didn't have a lot of paint on it. So I'm going to start inside inner corner of the eye along the edge of the nose here. And this one might require a second coat of paint or maybe more paint applied, like a thicker, thicker bit of paint applied. Again, I'm working on the left side, which is complicated since I'm right handed. And we're going to add this in here. And up through here, fluff, 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 like big long white eyelashes. And under the eye. Cool. If you get too much, like I did over here, you can blend the peachy color right in. Just I just dipped my brush that already had white on it into this lighter orange tone and brush it, the wet paint together. And it blends. I do like this peachy tone being on the cheeks and you can add that anywhere. Like I could, I could put, I could mix some white with some of that orange and make the, this light peach color. And I could add that anywhere, like here, here, wherever. All right, there we have it so far. I've still got some of that pe light peach color, which I think I might dry brush, which means I don't have much paint on my brush at all. I dry brush a little here and there just to add another color. We have so many shades of orange going on here, which I love. We're getting there. See that? We're getting we're getting to where the face is starting to come to life more. I can leave this face nice and round, but I did talk to you about thinning it out just a bit. I'm going to try and do that. One side on mine, this is a little rounder than this side, but I, I don't think that's going to be a big deal. Now, you guys, if you like yours and you don't want to mess around with it, I would say leave it and don't do anything to it. I'm going to show you how to thin out the face if needed. So one of the things I told you, I really like how this meets with this. And I'm gonna do that here by coming up with black very carefully. And it's like I'm adding another black stripe. Looks like he's a joker smile now. And I'm gonna bring this jaw down here too. So you can see that thinned out the face a bit. Totally not necessary. But it did make it match, for me, it made it match a little closer to this original one. Which I try to do. Okay. Just 
adding to that black stripe. Anywhere you need to touch up black, you can, except I want you to wait down in here because we're going to add some orange down in there. Painting that patterns is really fun. I really enjoy that. That looks kind of weird, but I can probably fix that up with some white or just very carefully curve black a little better. There, that's better. Joker smile tiger. Okay, I'm gonna wash the brush off. Wash it off pretty good. Do -do -do. One of the things I wanna do here just looking at the two paintings side by side. And since we've got time, this painting goes kind of fast. I like how it has this lighter peachy tone compared to this one. So it's it's closer to this color, what I'm gonna brush in the middle of the nose. So I'm gonna add a highlight just down the, the bridge of the nose, which is that very center area. And I have my light orange that I used originally I'm gonna mix a little white with that and make this kind of peachy color or something similar. There, that's pretty close to what I want. And I'll just do a highlight kind of down the center of the nose. And this also helps make the nose appear more rounded because we've got Mid-tone, which is that base orange we painted on. We've got our shading, which is this kind of reddish brown we painted on. And now we've got a highlight down the center of the nose area. So now it looks makes it look a lot more three-dimensional. I do feel like I could blend the edges of that in a little better. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll use a just a clean, damp brush. And as long as the paint's wet, you can kind of smudge the edges of it outward so it blends in a little bit better. You can also use your fingertip. Sometimes I do that almost like I'm like doing makeup on this cute tiger. <laughs> and I think now would be a really good time for us to um, paint the pink nose. And it's super easy to do. I know most of you probably already know how we get pink out of all these colors we have on our palette. Red and white, but not a lot of red. The red is really overpowering. So I just pick up a little bit of red and mix it in with some white. And I just add a little more as needed till I get a nice lightish pink. This is probably pretty close, maybe a little more red. That's about right. Kind of looks like a raspberry, melted ras raspberry sherbet. And I'm just going to brush in along here. Kind of goes with the V shape that we originally drew. Feel like I didn't make quite enough pink. It's just going to meet down with the top of the mouth there. And then later on, we add the white highlight on top and that kind of helps bring the nose to life. Right now it's looking really good. Just need some eye color and some little fine details. I'm washing my brush off because I'm going to have us move towards adding some orange back in down in here. So a lot of us, it probably got completely eliminated when we added the white and I want to add it back in there. So hopefully you still have some orange left. If not, remember the color mix was yellow, red, and a little bit of white, but it's it's not a lot of red. It's probably like two parts yellow, one part red or something to that effect. And don't worry if it's not the exact sh uh, same shade of orange because we can have different shades going on in here like we've been doing. But what I want to do is just along the bottom edge of these black stripes, I'll just add a thin orange stripe. And I feel like my brush is like flinging water on my canvas, which means sometimes you get water collected on this, this metal part, which is called the ferrule. And it just hangs out there. 
just hiding from you until you're painting and then it wants to fling off onto your canvas. That happens to me all the time. So I have to always remember to dry that part off. Okay, I like that a little better now. Down in there, having just a bit more orange. You might have some bits of white paint that's not quite dry and it'll turn sort of peachy tone. That's totally fine. It's just gonna match this. Um, let's see, I could also add some, if I wanted to, I could add some along here. It doesn't, I don't really have it up along the face here, but I mean, why not? We can pattern our tiger however we want. That's the cool thing, it's your tiger. You are the designer and creator here. I've seen pictures of some tigers that are, um, I think they're albino tigers. And instead of orange and black stripes, they're patterned with white and brown, like a lighter brown color which is really neat. And then I think maybe those ones do have blue eyes. I have to look it up. I have to do a little Google search. Albino tiger. Maybe we'll paint one of those one day. So anywhere you feel like you want to put more orange, it's not going to hurt anything. If you're owl, uh, owl. I just painted an owl right before this. I'm really messing up with my words today. That's all right. It's been a long day. I've been painting all day. <laughs> <laughs> if you uh, feel like your tiger is looking a little too orange, you can add more white stripes or more black stripes. If you feel like it's looking a little too black, you can add more white or orange. Um, so you can change it up as you like. I'm going to come back in with a little white in some areas. I feel like looking at it on the monitor here and in person, I can see some areas I want to add more white to. Maybe we should do a, an owl for the kids kit. That would be fun. Especially as we're getting into fall and like Halloween time. An owl would be a lot of fun. I do have a, one of our kids paintings that we did as a single kit is a snowy owl. It looks just like Hedwig from Harry Potter. And he's wearing a little um, like a red Santa hat sort of thing. And that one's really a cute one. Okay, I think it's time for us to add the eye color because these are nice and dry and ready for eye color. And then we'll add these funny little, these are upside down Y shapes that are little wrinkles that they have on their face. We'll add those in too. But first let's do the eye color and let's wash our brush. Brush wise, you'll probably use your smallest brush for this unless you have really, really big eyes then maybe this medium brush would be good. Finally, we get to use some blue again because we're gonna make green and the two colors on your palette that make green are blue and yellow. So I'll grab my little brush, which is nice and clean because I haven't used it in a while. And I'm going to blob off a little yellow. Make sure there's no orange in it because we'll end up with a weird color. And then just mix a little bit of blue in and just keep adding a little blue until you get a nice bright jungle green that you like. And re remember, you can do light blue eyes if you want. You can do any color eyes. Even if you want to do crazy pink eyes. Poor Tiger would have an irritated eye. <laughs> pink eyes. And I'm just going to brush in with this little brush around the uh, pupil we painted into the white canvas. When we add white highlight to the eye later on, it looks really good. But for now, it's just kind of lifeless eyes, I guess. No highlight, no shine, no sparkle. Don't worry, Mr. Tiger or Mrs. Tiger, we will add some sparkle in a little bit. So your eye color, it might require two coats of paint, but here's the important thing. This is super important. This type of paint, which is called acrylic paint, 
you need to let it dry before you add a second coat because the second coat will not stick to the first coat unless it's dry. So we'll let it dry for a few minutes if you feel like you need to add a second coat. Let's wash the brush. Let's go ahead and add the white shine to the nose. That's just a little white swoop right across the top edge. I am running out of white here. So I'll just do a little white swoop there. Completely imperfect. And I'm going to now add these black upside down Y shapes. And if you have a if you have a kitty cat that's a tabby cat, you'll see they have something very similar to that. So I don't want those to be solid black. I want them to be kind of a, a lighter shade of black. Let me just put my palette in the sun here. Our sunlight's changing. Good thing I'm gonna be done with this in just a little bit. So I'm gonna mix red and orange. I mean, I'm sorry, We're gonna, I'm gonna mix orange, but I'm gonna mix red and yellow to make orange. A little more yellow than red. So it makes this really vivid orange, not peach. It's definitely just a vivid orange. And then I'm gonna swirl my brush and knock some of the excess paint off. And I'm gonna grab a little black, mix it in there. More black than we used in this color. So it's going to be a dark brown. Not a super beautiful brown, <laughs> but it's brown, somewhat brown. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna come under these two little things I call like the spider antenna. I'm gonna come and I'm gonna make a line that goes like this and then one on the other side. They don't have to be perfectly lined up. And from there, I'm gonna go off this way. So it's like you're drawing an upside down Y. And then you can add a few other little wrinkly shapes just lines, just lines and patterns. I feel like the more patterns you have, the more like a tire this is gonna look. And that looks about how I want it to look. Little wrinkles. <laughs> okay, now let's go ahead and add the whisker dots. So I'm gonna wash the brush. Actually, no, let's not wash the brush. We're gonna use the same brown color. I wanted it to be a little lighter. I used solid black here and I felt like it was a little too dark, but we've got this nice dark brown made. I'm gonna just take the brush and I do three lines and they're just dotted lines. They start like, right. let's start, let's do a dot right here and here. That's where they're gonna start from. And it just, got, like the first one is just gonna go out and up. I'll match it up with this one. Da -da 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 -da. You can make noise as you do it. And the last one is gonna just go along here. So I have three rows. I feel like three is a good number. If you wanna do more than three, you can, because it's your painting. If you want to paint actual whiskers, you can do that too. It can just be a little complicated and a little bit of a challenge. But if you feel up to that, you can do that. I would probably look up and see, I'm assuming the whiskers are white, but I could be wrong. I am going to take white with my little brush. I cleaned my brush off. And I'm going to just add a little light fluff of fur in any area that feels like it needs it. For me, this, I feel like um, along the bottom of the chin here is a good spot just to add some little skinny fluffy fur because we were using a bigger brush to do all of it and this will add little skinny. Oops, I have orange mixed in there. Oh well. This will add little skinny bits of fur. I need more white on my palette. I've been trying to dig it out from under an orange color and that's how I'm getting orange in it because I'm being lazy. Being super lazy by not just adding weight to my palette. It's because I know I'm almost done and the paint comes out of these bottles kind of fast. It, I have this big blob of paint now, which I'm definitely not going to use that much. Bummer. Okay. It happens. All right. So I'm adding just fluff to the edge of the chin here. 
And what makes it show up is it's, it's flicking over the black. And I can do that anywhere. Like you can kind of reshape the face anywhere you need just by doing that. That looks cool, I like it. I didn't really do that with this. I, I kind of kept it all with that medium brush, but I figured we have some time, I'll show you guys the extra little fun stuff. Under the eye, I mean, you could do that too. You could add some white, be careful around the eye, just add some white flicks of fur, almost like they're white eyelashes, but they're not really, it's fur. And I would use this, another spot would be like along the ear to get little fine hairs. Even like along the edge here of the canvas. I mean, I'm sorry, the edge of the tiger. Edge of the tiger, it's the thrill of the fight. So that song is called Eye of the Tiger, and it was really popular in the 80s. And it's what made it really popular, I think, was this movie called Rocky. And it's about a boxer. And the funny thing about that song, every time I hear it, I think about fifth grade. Because I played the clarinet in fifth grade, and we did a concert for the parents. And Eye of the Tiger was one of the songs we played. I probably wouldn't even remember my clarinet part. It was very basic. All right, I like that. Okay, let's, while we get the white on our brush, you can continue doing this. Like you can, after the video is over, you can add white fur, little fine white fur, fur pieces, anywhere you want. It's just going to add more realism to your tiger. And it's also a good thing to practice. So I'm always a big fan of practicing things. This is a great way to practice. Um, I want to add the white highlight to the eyes. You can add another coat of green on the eyes later. Let's add the white highlight first. It's just in the pupil. So in the upper right corner of the black part of the eye, the pupil, I make a dot. Same with this one, upper right corner, dot. And then the lower left corner, just opposite, dot on both. Look at that. Suddenly, much more lifelike eyes. I have thicker black out, uh, eyeliner on this one than this one, and that's fine. It just gives it a slightly different look. This one also has a little bit broader nose than this one. And last little thing we wanna do, I think I got everything outside of tracing along the top edge. So that would be the red orange that we made earlier. So here we have black, see how I did that? I'm just gonna swirl those two together. So we're gonna make a color very similar to this color that we uh, shaded our nose with. So that was red and yellow, more yellow than red, and a tiny little touch of black. So it should make kind of a reddish brown. If it's too pink looking, you'll wanna add a little more black. Brush wise, I'm using my medium sized brush if you want to have finer fur, you can use this little brush. It just takes a little bit longer. First, what I do is I go, I'm lifting and tapping my brush to make fur-like brush strokes, broken up brush strokes. And here's where I can reshape my ear where I kind of messed up with the blue sky earlier. And then go along here and then I stop. Look at that, it's so much better than that one. It stands out, oops. So much better. And I'll do this ear too, same way. Lifting and tapping my brush, the very tip, we're just using the tip of the bristle, so there's no need to use the wide part of the brush. And I go right to the, meet the white down there. One last little part will be the top of the head. Again, trying to stay with the furry type of brush stroke flicking little fur out into the sky. Looks so cool. Yay, we are done. I love the way it looks. Love it. I'm gonna sign this one. You can pick any color you want. I am a big fan of pink, so I'm gonna make pink. You could, a blue would be nice too because we haven't really used a lot of blue in this. And I just will put my initials down 
Ooh, it's sloppy. Well, I will. I just put my initials, which have over the years, because I've signed so many paintings, they've just become loops. So oh, that works. So that is all. I hope you guys enjoyed painting the tiger with me. I think they ended up so cute. Look at me, I'm a tiger. You can hold it in front of your face. Have your parent take a picture of it in front of your face. That's it. I hope you guys had fun. Now I have two tigers. Ooh, look at that. How fun. Okay, so I will see you guys next time we paint. I don't know what animal I'll design next, probably since we're gonna be doing something close to October. I'm thinking owl would be really cool. But if you have any other suggestions, I love knowing what you guys wanna paint. So put in your suggestions if you want or have your parent email or message us and we'll see what we can do. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time.